I will always say your business is a small business. Just bring in your egg and get your marketing. So right. Celebrate with me as a vendor selling Benue yams. Benue yams by Lance from her business. What have you done to me? I know what are you doing? How is you? Greetings, fellow viewers. Now, today's episode is a special one as we celebrate one of our friends, the winning woman of extraordinary talent, the beautiful, the elegant, the industrious Jane Udo, aka Rice Merchant. Jane is a food winner, her excellence knows exactly what she wants and is determined to succeed in her chosen food. Jane Udo is based in her college in the the food basket of the nation, and with a media storage, she has taken the abundant food stuff in the United and has set up for herself a successful global brand. She is a global rice merchant who has achieved tremendous success in her business. In this episode, she graciously and generously shares with us the secrets behind her big win and how she was able to elevate her business to the current height. And you know what? She buys the land. So you want to watch to the very end to get the whole message. And before we hear from Jane, let me take a moment to introduce our community. The Winnie Woman community is a community hosted by our one and only Abimbola Ademola, aka Bima Fish. Now, the Winnie Woman community is made up of like minded, legit vendors who have come together to support and grow our one another's businesses. Our active Facebook community and WhatsApp groups provide the support platform for us to share useful business related tips and support one another in our entrepreneurial journeys. In addition, we hold epic, when I mean epic, I mean one of the most epic, one of the kind, absolutely beautiful visibility movements that helps vendors generate leads, increase brand visibility, build and boost sales, of course. They build their trust model and like factor the bond with a larger audience, boost sales and revenue. So if you would like to be a part of our supportive community, be sure to check us out on Facebook at the Winning Woman Community. Now, back to our special guest, Jane. Jane will take us through her incredible journey. You have to get from the horse's mouth, you know. And she takes us through her incredible journey of humble beginnings to becoming a successful global rice merchant. Now, whether you are current or aspiring entrepreneur, there is so much to be learned from the from her inspiring story. So sit back, relax, and watch till the very end. If you would like to learn more about Jane's business and you would like to, you know, um, know anything she of the services she provides, be sure to check her out on her Facebook handle at Jane Rice Merchant. Also find her details and her contact in the description box below. Now Jane actually offers a variety of food stuff from the land of Benue, and that includes the Benue sweet yams, a variety of um, variety of rice species, potatoes, and many more food stuff that you can get from Benue State. So how about you just grab one liter of water, hydrate through this process, and sit back, relax, as we learn and celebrate the achievement of a true winning woman and gain insights into her path to success. I would say online is that online you is something that is just a tie. You get customers from all around, within and outside Nigeria. The opportunity to sell to as much as as much as so many people within and outside Nigeria. But offline is limiting you to a particular space. You get a particular space and it it, it, it won't take you it won't take you in far. But off, on, online you are getting teams both in Nigeria, outside Nigeria, within the states. I don't know if you understand, within the states. Then if you want to basically run an offline market and it's something that is equal, that is full stuff, you have to get a factory. Or let's say you must be a very big organization like that today. It's a very well known organization and so many other organizations that will be supplying you have your own factory, you have your boss, you have your engines, you have so many things. So you don't need to start okay and uh, preaching that this is your product is selling because you use your vans, your vehicle to distribute to get to distribute to um other uh, um wholesalers. But if as, as an online Market or, or the online seller, you can sell to both people within the state and outside the state and still achieve or and still build that company or that factory in some way with determination, determination, focus, and not giving up. I said uh, my story is a lot. No single food, when I mean no single food in the house, no single food. And the kind of person that don't like active begging, I hate it a lot. I hate it a lot. I have to drink water for that day. See, the means when they beat. And I go away to get to And from that time, I told myself that, gee, I will never be stranded again in my life. That is what I told myself. I told myself, I will never be stranded again in my life. I have to force my husband. He got a shock for me. 
not too far from the house. I was selling him provision. They told me because I was selling provision then. So a thief came, broke into the house, into the uh, provision store, took so many things. The second time they came, they came, they broke into the provision store, took so many things. I was as in, I wasn't myself. I wasn't myself. I was questioning God. Yes. I have to leave that place because it's now, it's as if it's no longer secure for me to stay there. I have to leave that place. I sold all my uh, goods, went into, uh, I was selling clothes, then I was in my house selling clothes. I, during the, the Christmas tree was, I sold and sold and sold and sold and sold. Then after that season, credit began to come in, because no one's are selling credit. People say, I know you don't have a shop, people come to start collecting your credit. I said, no. And then I uh, made a table, took it to the junction. Started then, before then, I was supplying a restaurant, a gussi. I was supplying them a gussi tamoya. I went instead of them going to the market and buy um, a gussi, they start granting it its money. I sell for them lesser than what market is giving them, like 100 naira discount, because I go to the push to get those gussi, so I give them 100 naira discount. And what I do is that I blend the gussi for them. They don't need to blend. What is I just come and supply them. And I very spooky. It's just that the work is tedious, of course. When you buy gussi, you have to start grinding it with the washing, drying, all those things. It's very tedious work. And how I started that gussi was that. I, when I, I lost my other sister, I was still in the U.S. When I went to go to, to, go home to inform my mom, we didn't want my mom to know. We want to be there for her before we inform her. So I discovered that Igusi, Abuja, why not, why not I go to the bush, buy the Igusi, had one that I've not paid, and meal and supply them. I started doing it, and I get double of what I am meaning. Double of what I'm meaning. Too much gain was in that Igusi. So the money I saved from that Igusi, I did my table. Took it to the junction. Nobody was sending there. And the first, if you ask, who go to mobile bank junction, ask, they tell you one tall lady started that market there. I took it to that place. Um, put my oil, put my goose. I was still supplying the rest. Leaving my house, supply them. Put my oil, put my goose. Was going to the mill. I was measuring rice and bushing. Little by little, I wasn't selling provision. I only food stuff. And I discovered I was selling. The first day I opened my shop, I sold up the pet ticket. I said, what? Because no markets. You have to go to the market or you go to the bar to get. I opened it again. This is how I was selling. But the challenge I was having was the sun was too much, wearing it falling to fall on me. And the car, it wasn't easy. I added eggs. I was buying going to the farm to get eggs. People that selling eggs come and carry eggs from me. I saved some money. I bought a little land close to where I, I um, did the container, where I put the boot. Then I um, I did this thing. I, how would I say? I bought a container, mounted the container there. Stored so then I was only meaning rice safe. I stored some rice rice I bought from the meal, the one that I'm reading meal stored. I was storing rice there. Then a robbers came, they broke into the shop. Rice of almost 300,000. I stored it, took everything. Every small cry, cried and cried and cried. So I have to shift the container from that meal because people were like saying nobody's living in that meal, it's only uh, people that are selling food that day. Now, why don't I shift it to where the houses are so that people can be, if anything happens, people will notice it. So I shifted the container from that um, road to where these houses, that my land is sitting but where I shifted it to, I have to start paying rents for that, where the container is. Shifted it there, market was going up, and everything was going, business was even booming at more than what it was. It was, it was booming. I did a contribution, I packed 300,000, I went, I did that, because people actually were not getting out, I just go, I said, ah, another thing I need to add is ice fish. I bought the fridge of 300,000. Bought the fridge there. Bringing ice fish in each carton that my gain is 1,000, 1,500. I sell up to 10 carton. How? These people that are frying fish, they come and buy for me as wholesale. I don't like me when I'm doing my business. I don't want, I don't do my business. It's turnover. My business is strictly on turnover. If you notice, my business is strictly on turnover. I don't want to get too much. I don't like my business to be. Like, once I calculate my transport, everything, I add it. My expenses, I spend, I add it to the this thing. If it's 1,500 or 1,000, I know it's my gain. So if you check one five, then it's ten cattle, you know how much I pass from other things I'm selling. People will rush it open. Now before two fish has finished, you'll be asking about no fish as if fish don't finish. People will come and be counting fish to fly and go and sell. That's how I was selling. Robbers came again to the store. They took things. The last one that they came. Then okay, as I was doing that business, I was coming online. Mm -hmm. Then I was not in I was I'm not in face. She taught me the rice, the procedure. The first time I did the rice, I made losses. But I still continue, I continue, I continue to became perfect. And even sometimes we do this where we show you, I get it short because once there's too much traffic, the rice will be shut off. So we kept, um, I kept doing it, they came, they entered my shop again. I said, ah, I will do this one. I said, ah, because my house, I have an extra one, two bedroom flat. I have an extra two bedroom flat where I'm not um, using this and the rest. Here, I got the cash. So what made me leave that place was, 
The last time I went to King, they took my diffuser. I knelt down under the rain and cried to God. You know, sometimes when something that happened to you, God is trying to push you from that. Then I was still learning the rest. I was doing it and I was making silly people buy. I was coming online, posting one or two. I wasn't consistent in posting online. I would just post one or two, move, post one or two, people buy one or two. So people say delivery before payment. You do delivery before payment, you will not sit there in your house. You start bringing back the goods. You get all those things. So I was just doing it little by little. I cried. My mother was angry. He said, he has told me that I should not do anything. I should sit in the house. That I'm not lacking anything. That thing is providing this one. That one, what am I sitting in the house? I said, no. My destiny is not to sit in the house. I know who I, the kind of person I am. I know who I am. It gets, I know what my dreams are. I know what I dreamt from. When I, before I, if, when I was a child, you understand. So I, you cannot just keep my dream. Let me just be, so I'll be depending on you for everything. I'll you I'm angry. So I just have to respect him at that particular time. I live because the, it was much. I just have to take that place. Put the shop on it. Then I focus on life. Mainly. They did come in online. So, you know, as since I was like, ah, so I was wasting my time all this while. I would have been posting as in the scenes within <clears throat> the way the scenes started. That even, you know, even most influencers on Facebook, big names on Facebook, big names on Facebook, I don't even need to call their name, that they're not even in my group. I have to supply them rice and they don't want anybody to know about it. When it's season, I supply them their rice to whoever they want me to supply to. I supply them. I started posting, people started buying, people started patronizing. It was, I think God was trying to tell me something that I wasn't listening. Contracts came in, contracts came in, contracts came in, good contracts came in. That's good contracts. This is my second year online. My second year online. I'll be my third year, my third year online. Which contracts are they coming in? Which contracts are they coming in? I started learning the business. Learning it. I don't even thought for people this rice business. Last year, I don't know if you know my like saying, why is my right dying year last year? Last year, I didn't really, it was during New Year, my went into the year, and I made a lot of mistake in that New Year. Although I told them that yams, New Year is spoiling, it took get spoiled. But most of the people, they were like buying essence. So I started having challenges. People are complaining about because of due to the heavy rain for the flood that happened in Benue State, the yams, because at that early stage, the yams came and it was so spoiling that much. It was okay. No, people were not recording things of yams getting spoiled. But when the flood came, the things of yams getting spoiled nearly put me to drop, nearly spoiled my name, nearly spoiled me, nearly made me just like saying, why am I giving them bad yams? I still have to just stop. I told them I'm no longer selling yams for nothing. We have become red dry. And those people that I promised to refund, I thank God to God to the glory. I have refunded all of them their yams and I'm making sales in yams. And how, why we make it? It's like, when we go to the bush to buy yams, we don't just buy 100 to buy No, we buy like 1,000 to buy 1,000 to buy to make it up. Like if you're getting 5,000, 6,000 per 100 to buy. So if you check it to 1,000 to buy. And sometimes you say 1,000 to buy in two days. Depending on how the demand of yam is one of the Yam and rice is one of the food we in Nigeria is the most. We don't have any other food. This is one of the food we eat. And Benue State is the biggest state that produces yam and rice. Selling yam. They supply, I'm telling you, I didn't even know this state is this powerful till I came to this state. They supply, let me say, 90% of Nigeria, if not 100%. Here because I see so many people, even the, where you are staying, people from your location get yams from us. From your location, they get yams from Benue State. Here. You see people, people, house, people dropping into different bushes, villages to source for yam. To source for that. The one that's even making the yams expensive because they don't know how to price. When they give them price, you say, ah, it's cheap, we buy. Get to source for yams, you understand? So that is how we that is how it's done. Tricky for me. I told you if you're buying yams, buy different sizes of yam. Buy different sizes of yams. You buy different sizes of yam. And I told them that the picture you're seeing in here is ninety percent. It shouldn't be hundred percent because most time picture it most of the things look bigger in picture. It's only big size of yam that don't look bigger in picture. But small size of yam look bigger in picture than big size of yam. And I even did tell people, if you're selling, I don't only concentrate on selling in bags. Sell in Moodle, sell in paint rubber. Sell in Moodle, sell in paint rubber. Sell to different varieties of rice, like they have cheaper rice. Some people cannot afford the big rice to go for the cheap rice. Don't just focus on one particular thing alone. So even I eventually, I try venturing into perishable because which is tomato. I discovered that this is, I discovered that my, that's not my calling because let me just concentrate on my rice and yam. I had to pay debts and pay. As in, it's sure people will be complaining that the team is getting, it's got spoiled on the way. People will stay five days on the road, to stay four days on the road before I'm refunded. I've refunded. And that, that is ups and down, but we just keep going to because we keep pushing. We keep pushing and we keep pushing. So I, I'm doing this my business. Okay, so, so I'm just investing because land doesn't depreciate, rather it appreciates. So, I mean, that's the glory of God. My three children have lands in their name. They get the glory of God. So, in time to come, do we use the land wisely? And I'm also planning on opening, like, the land, let me say, five plots in one. Five plots in one. He bought it for my factory because he said, I had it. I've been talking about this dream of opening my own rice factory. And I know I'll accomplish, accomplish it. It's a step. It's a step. I've started buying my engine one after the other. But although I don't post most of it, I don't like posting my wins online. But to glory of God, I know 
things are falling in place. You get with time, everything will fall in place. And I would advise anybody that wants to start any business, do not use loan to start your business. One, do not use crowdfunding, do not collect money from people to start your business. Two, why did I say so? Sometime last year, I gave some farmers money to buy fertilizer and pay their workers. In exchange, when they have their rice, they give me the quantity of rice my money wants. What happened? The workers were not the rice. We agreed to reschedule that once the plan is it will give me. If I have used people's money to do that last year, I will tell you I'll be in serious debt and my name will fly all over Facebook and everywhere that I scammed people. But since it's my own personal money, I am bearing the cross alone. I don't know if you get I am bearing the cross alone. I am following them. I'm seeing what they are doing. Most of them are started buying rice seed for plant making. You get so I would advise anybody that wants to go into business, any business at all, do not use loan. Do not use crowdfunds to go into business. You can also use loan if you okay, like you say you want to start a business, you can't collect loan. How are you sure you are going to sell to pay that loan? I don't know if you get it night actually when it's season. Because I'm coming back one AM, one AM when it's season. One AM, especially when I go to the bush. It has not been sometimes motor goes point meeting or push, we enter bike from push call road, we'll stand the loop for motor. So it has not been easy at all. So what I did was we had a... Okay, um I'll see. I would say if you want to start a business, what do you love? Like me, if you, if you, I know if you work for office, you know that my parents is even say it's right from small. I'm just kind of person that my husband might be, I cannot work in an office. If I'm working in an organization, she must be part time. And if you want to pay me now, a month, you cannot pay me four to five hundred k. Forget about that work, I'm not going to work for you. Like for me, I cannot even work in an office part time. So there are some people that business is, business is not meant for you. Business is not meant for everybody. It is not meant for every, not everybody that will say, I want to do business, I'm a business person. No. Find your calling. Find your calling. Find, put yourself, your inner self at peace. And find your calling. Find that thing that God has destined you to be. You know, most times, when God's will does not align with your will, it will never work out. That is it. If his will does not align with your will, it will never work out. Find that thing that's aligned, that God's will aligned with your own will before going to, into um, any business you get. And another thing I say, look around your location. Find that thing that is meeting in your location. Find what it's meeting in there. People want and can't get. Start selling it. And our advice, if you this food stuff is one of the lucrative business in Nigeria to be why? The way the economy is hard, you have people going for yeah, people make food too. When people eat on the daily, they eat three square meals on the daily basic. You go first chop belly food before you think of clothes or hair to wear for putting. If you're not chop belly food, why you want to wear for yourself? So food stuff is one of the leading business in Nigeria to I want some assaults now. Yeah. Well, Who are they some assaults? Show them my rice. See as the rice come on well, bar. You come on well. Oh, I yeah, have to go do some assaults. Ah, eh? We should go come on do some assaults. Hey! Hey! I have got this.